17th overall, meaning Stanford has won the last five. But nobody's looking at that right now. Both of these teams focused on this match. And when I heard John Cook talk to his team earlier today at Servant Pass, he talked about this being a huge test. And how will we respond? We're about to find out. Katie Berry will start serving for Stanford. Harper Murray has to track it down. A tough first contact for Nebraska. Chance here for Stanford to make a statement early. Elia Rubin with the kill. Stanford has been good all season long attacking from the service line. They're taking pride in their service game. And they want to be strong from that line in six rotations. Stanford. She missed the first few matches, but when she came back, made a huge difference. This line-to-line -line serve right between the two players for Nebraska come up with an ace. And we talked to Kevin Hambly, Stanford's head coach, about that today at Serve Pass. He said, look, we're just going for it on our serves. We want to serve tough even more than they have in the past. Yeah, I think tough serving is a signature of the Stanford volleyball program, but they wanted to be even better to get to that national championship. 15th overall season as a head coach for Kevin Hambly. Of course, spent eight seasons as the head coach of Illinois, got them to the national final in 2011 before coming over to take over the Stanford program. Cammie Miner going back to Kendall Kemp, and the Nebraska block ready to go. Harper Murray was there in the middle. In Nebraska, three blocks per set is their average early in the season. That is a big defensive number. Not only are they good in the backcourt, but they start out the match with the block right there on Kendall Kemp. Cammie Miner feeding the middle. Another swing comes off for McKenna Vicini. Here's a stat, Molly, that we were watching. The comparison of these two. Very interested to see how this shapes up. Well, I love this comparison statistically because you've got the, a team that holds a team. Nebraska holds their opponent to .052, and Stanford's well over 300 offensively on the season. Lexi Rodriguez, one of the best liberos in the nation with the up. Comes right back to Nebraska. Harper Murray swinging on the right side. Stanford's block just waiting on it. Sammy Francis and Elliot Rubin. Both teams know each other well. They're well prepared for this match. We saw both teams go through scouting, and they know the tendencies of each player. It's paying off right now. Set one, we play best of five. First to 25, you have to win by two. Lena Ogilvy on the serve. It dribbles over the tape, but rolls out. Ogilvy for Stanford has been serving the ball incredibly well, putting a lot of pop on it. That one just misses wide, but Kevin Hamley likes what he sees from her. Paul, you got to see the Stanford team up close and personal last weekend. What did you notice about their service game? Do you feel it being different, more aggressive? Well, they, they won the serve and pass game, and that is so crucial if you want to win at the highest level. You want to put pressure on your opponent so you can score with your defense. Stanford had two big matches over the weekend, playing Ohio State and Minnesota, and now another team for the Big Ten. Yeah, Stanford planned it that way. They wanted to test themselves early and prepare themselves pre-conference. Here is Kendall Kipp, the reigning Pac-12 Player of the Year, first team All-American. Lindsey Krause handling that, but it's an overpass, and Sammy Francis eating it. And that's what I'm talking about. Stanford attacking from the back line creates those point opportunities on the overpass. Sammy Francis, her second season as a middle blocker. She played kind of all over in clubs, some on the right side, but honing that middle position. Morgan Riley going backside to Merritt Beeson, the transfer from Florida. Oglavie for Stanford there in a good location, but can't control the pace by Merritt Beeson right there on the right side. She is a first year player for Nebraska. Played her last couple of years for Florida. And John Cook was telling us about how important she's been because they have so many young faces coming into the program. Well, the leadership in the gym, he says she will stop practice and help get the team situated and focused. Attacking error by Elia Rubin. 
I thought that was really impressive about Merritt, just because a new face coming in with new teammates, and she feels that confident. I agree. I was shocked. Yeah. I mean, for a first-year player to just stop things and go, hey, we need that's the leadership that they need for this young Nebraska team. Lexi Rodriguez, Merritt Beeson, and Lexi Rodriguez, both the captains for Nebraska. Trying to run Sammy Francis off of one foot, and Nebraska ready, Lindsey Krause. Lindsey Krause, number 22 in red for Nebraska. Watch her on the left side of your screen. She gets there and just shuts down that line attack by Sammy Francis. Tied up at six. Cammie Miner underneath it to Elia Rubin using the block. Nebraska trying to load up Elia Rubin, number 13, when she's just one of two hitters in the front row. But she's able to side out off that block. She was all Pac-12 last year, as you see Rubin stepping back, started every match. 3.15 kills per set last year for Elia, and she is up that to 3.6. Service error, it goes long. Elia Rubin going for that corner, missed by about three inches, but going corner to corner. She's been very effective with that serve. Merritt Beeson, two seasons at Florida. She was an all-SEC selection. Actually moved to the opposite position when she got to college. Had not played there before. Still playing on that right pin for Nebraska. Nice up by Rodriguez. Katie Baird readjusting, going sharp in the angle. Bergen Riley going to the back row with Harper Murray. And it's a net violation on Stanford. You can hear the coaching staff for Nebraska in the middle of that transition play yell tip. So that team is collapsing in the middle, ready for a tip in long rallies. And that's something we saw Nebraska talk about so much in their scout. We were at practice last night and today, and they were ready for Stanford to tip over that block. Baird. The bump set, Beeson going to Krause, and she just has to bump it over. Nice opportunity, Cammie Meyer's gonna take it. Cammy Miner's a front row setter for Stanford, and Nebraska forgot about that in the middle of a rally. You always want to body up. Blocker should be in front of that setter, and both were cheating towards their respective hitters. You see the gap between the two blockers. Cammy Miner, Pac-12 setter of the year, first team All-American. Now Anna Pringle. Nebraska trying to work on that first contact. Stanford's made it really hard. Down the line, Baird places it nicely. Cammie Miner, number two in white for Stanford. She goes low and really disguises where she's going to put that ball. Looks like she's going to set it back and then feeds Katie Baird on the left pin. Lexi Rodriguez handles that beautifully, and they can run Andy Jackson, the true freshman, on the slide. Andy Jackson has been impressive all season long for Nebraska. Talk about impact player. She is up. Look at that high contact point driving through the seam of the Stanford block. You have Andy Jackson as a true freshman in the lineup, along with Harper Murray. John Cook told us, you know, we didn't set our lineup until the very first match of the season. There were no preconceived notions about who was going to be a starter. Maybe Lexi Rodriguez at the Libro spot. <laughs> she might have had yeah. that one. Yeah. <laughs> but he let everybody compete for their position. And these three freshmen that earned their starting spots, he said, look, they're ultra competitive. They want to be the best. And it shows. And Bergen Riley, too, at the setter position. Almost forgot about her. Cammy Miner going down the line, serving at Harper Murray. Out flies Merritt Beeson from the back row, but a bit too long. The first contact, a little shooty. The setter did not have enough time to really run what she wanted to, but Merritt Beeson flying out of the back row. Stanford tripling that big set, that back row quick set. So pay attention to that when Nebraska attacks out of the back row. And we saw the triple block uh, in that Texas match. Seemed to be pretty effective for them. Very effective. Cammy Miner running Elia Rubin out of the back row. And point Nebraska. And that time Stanford running that back row attack kind of in the gap. 
Nebraska was all over it. They saw it coming and were ready, disciplined on the block, and it paid off. That's part of why scouting is so important for your coaching staff to prepare you for those moments. Three blocks for Nebraska, a team that has always prided itself on its defense. Kennedy or subbing in. This is a new wrinkle Nebraska has added. She's really working on that serve, misses there, but it's something that's been a positive for them. And Kennedy Orr is a player that ran part of the offense for them last year, so she was battling for that starting setting spot, but has been effective as a server and defensive player. So Stanford up two, and Katie Baird will serve for the second time in this match. Morgan Riley going behind her to Becca Alec. Becca Alec for Nebraska crushed that ball, just missing it wide. This is a rotation right there now where Bergen Riley, the freshman setter, is front row. Her two front row hitters are stacked on the left, and she's got Merritt Beeson probably coming down the middle. Serve is long for Katie Baird. That's four service errors for Stanford, but again, they want to serve aggressive, and those errors come with that sometimes. Kevin Hambley's okay with that. Yeah. Coming back over. Becca Alec got it. Becca Alec, that ball was probably three feet off the net. She got her feet there. That's not an easy play. It seems like it is, but a lot of people make an error. Very strong attack there by Becca Alec. She's in her sophomore season, enrolled last spring. So got that extra prep then before her freshman campaign where she played a big role for Nebraska. Here's Elena Oglevy, the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Week. She had 14 digs in the win over Minnesota. So a couple of service aces in that match. And I jinxed her on that one. Well, she's been serving the ball extremely tough, added probably five miles per hour more than she was serving the ball last year. And that, has, that makes a difference. The passer doesn't have enough time to react. Every time you talk to coaches to get ready for a match, you got to win the serve pass game. And that's something that Stanford really emphasizes. That tough serve. Ooh, okay, Harper Murray. When you go aggressive from the service line, sometimes it hits that tape and drops straight down. She gets a good break there. Tied up at 14. Harper Murray, the number one overall recruit in this incoming class. Again? Two in a row? What? Did she practice that? Just pulled it right out of her pocket twice. Pacific region reason she's doing it for her father Veda Murray who passed away when she was six years old after a battle with cancer he wore 27 when he played football at Michigan so her and her sister wear the number 27 very special reason behind it Morgan Riley going to Becca Alec in the middle Minor to Elia Rubin, and guess what? Nebraska's block is here. They averaged three blocks per set, and we're halfway through the first set, and they already have four blocks. Look at Becca Alec getting there to close that block a little bit late, but very effective. Largest lead for Nebraska. They're on a 4-0 run and a service error. What makes them such a good blocking team? Well, first of all, let's start with Coach John Cook. Yes. He was a former football <laughs> defensive coordinator, so that is where he likes to start. He likes to focus on defense both at the net and behind, and that's kind of a signature of Nebraska volleyball. Becca Alec, she is making herself known in this match. And Nebraska passing better so they can run that high percentage play out of the middle. That goes Lexi Rodriguez, a multi-time All-American. Cammy 
Miner trying to dump it back behind over her head. Out flies Harper Murray. Oglavi setting up. Elia Rubin with authority. Wow, she put a dent in the floor on that. You can hear the Nebraska staff yelling, take the line away. They want her to hit that angle, and she was still able to beat the defense. You know, Kevin Hamley reminded us today, Ellie Rubin is still a very young player. You forget because she plays with such maturity. Morgan Riley going out to Lindsey Krause. Miner behind her, Kip. Krause again, no! Cammy Miner, centers can block two. Watch this dig on the tip. Cammie Miner lays it out to keep it alive. Stanford stays in the rally. And then Cammie Miner again, big block for Stanford. Holly, you're a former setter. What do you think about those two defensive plays right there? I love those yeah. plays. Cammie Miner does everything well. There's no weakness in her game, but she's super athletic. She's able to keep Stanford in system from a wide range off the net. So after the service error, Nebraska up by one, going to 25. Tied up at 18. Both teams know how important it is to get the other team out of system. These are teams that can score off an easy serve. Anna Pringle back in for the Cardinal. Go at Murray. Riley trying to connect with Andy Jackson on the slide. They do. Andy Jackson hits at such a high contact point, and she doesn't always hit it straight down. She hits it flat and deep, and that comes with experience, and she's just a freshman for Nebraska. You know, watching practice last night, they were ending with that play. She wasn't getting the kill, so John Cook made him run it again, run it again. They probably did it five times, and she had the best attitude, the smile on her face, attacking the slide every time. Well, middles and setters need that connection, need that rhythm, need those extra reps because it's such a high percentage attack, and it's hard to run. Baird evens things up at 19. Tied up for the ninth time in set one. John Cook calls the timeout. So tied up at 19, a close first set. You know, we talk about the history of both of these programs and the things they've accomplished, the 14 national titles combined between Nebraska and Stanford. There was a moment of history earlier this season. They packed the football stadium, talking about Nebraska, for a volleyball match. It was incredible. The entire country is talking about it, both volleyball people and non-volleyball people. What a, an incredible day. And, and so incredible that Nebraska was able to produce this event and pull it off. And we got to talk to Lexi Rodriguez about playing in that environment and what it means. Be the best in the country. They love the sport of volleyball. There's Nebraska fans in Maples Pavilion right now. They made the trek. Yeah. Tied up at 19, a race to 25 points here in the opening set. Katie Baird at the out of system swing. Kendall Kip taking some of it off, and it works. That's her first kill on the night. And we talked about Kendall Kip leading this Stanford team. Finally getting her first kill, but Nebraska has written up a game plan to slow her down, and they've been effective so far. And remember, Kip averages almost four kills a set. And that's her first one, late in the first set. First lead for Stanford since it was 14-13. Meyer with the serve down the line. Out of the back row. Merritt Beeson, yes! One of the benefits to having a triple block is you can find some hands up there over the net, and Merritt Beeson for Nebraska does. Kennedy Orr comes back in to serve. 
trying to carve out that new role for her, came in as a setter. And there's just so much competition in Nebraska's gym. Tough pass by Ruben. Kip running in on it, finding the empty court. Tip over the block, and that's something the Nebraska coaching staff did not want to see drop. No tips dropping, but Kendall Kip finds a way. Her second kill in the set. Taylor Bevan will come in for the Stanford Cardinal. Was that an arm or a cannon? Did you hear the sound? I felt the sound. Wow. No wonder she's got that swagger on the court. Good pass in system ball in the gap and then, wow. Elia Rubin in transition, misses that wide. But Stamper with a good dig to keep that alive. Again, Harper Murray, number 27 in red, the Gatorade National Player of the Year last year. And a net violation on Stanford, but hey, Nebraska's block was there anyway. They were. She had two blockers sitting in front of her quick. You want to push that ball wide and create some gap, create a one-on-one -on -one situation. Again, going to 25, you have to win by two. Here's Bergen Riley. Stanford struggling with the pass. Becca Alec all over it. Bergen Riley, the freshman setter, gets an ace, and now Stanford wants a timeout. Nebraska needing two points to take the opening set. Defense travels, and that is the case so far today for this Nebraska team. Well, they're always good defensively, and you can see that they know where the ball's going. We saw the breakdown. They know what Stanford likes to run, so Stanford has to be even better. Double block, very disciplined at the net. And right now, four to two is the block advantage for Nebraska over Stanford. And you look at the Stanford team normally hits 327 on the season, and right now, Holly, they're hitting 160. They're hitting 160, but Nebraska usually holds their opponents to .052, so I guess they're beating that, but well under their <laughs> season average. Yeah, Nebraska has only allowed one opponent to hit over 100, and that was Creighton. They hit 109. That's an impressive stat. Yes. Nebraska has not beaten Stanford since 2008, and they've never won here on Stanford's home court. Just the opening set, a lot of volleyball to be played. Kendall Kip, yes! That time, Kendall Kip going down the line. She loves to hit the angle ball. But Nebraska's all over that. Not sure if this ball's pushed a little wider to give her that line attack. Does that look good from Kendall Kip, her second kill? That's her third, actually, oh, now. I missed one. She's still trying to get that four kills per set average. There's time. Harper Murray swinging on the right pin. Elia Rubin tried to load up, but Becca Alec better. I love the idea the dig went to the far left side of the net. You're going to want to set that ball, but Becca Alec saw the hit coming, gets over there, and closes the block. Set point, Nebraska. They go to Kip. That's, that's her, her fourth. Yep. That's her fourth, reaching her average. But still down, set point. Elia Rubin with a good pass. And then a little roll shot right in the middle of the court. Kip will rotate back to serve. They're wiping up some moisture on the Nebraska side of the court. Second set point for Nebraska. Eric Beeson, right pin, Nebraska takes the opening set, 
Merrick Beeson from the right side pin. First year player for Nebraska, but shows her experience taking a big swing to win the first set. The first time that Nebraska has won the opening set against Stanford in the last six meetings. Team captains, we have a good story about that. Yeah. Team captains, of course, Merrick Beeson and Lexi Rodriguez. You see the stats through set one. Stanford well under their season average, and Nebraska about 80 points under theirs. Set number two starts with a service error from Bergen Riley. All right, so we told you about the captains. This was so cool. They had the players come in, they met with them individually, one on one, the Nebraska coaching staff did. And they said, if you were a captain, who would you want with you? It was unanimous. They named Lexi Rodriguez, they named Merritt Beeson. And then on the flight home, the cap, the pilot of the plane actually came and told Lexi and Merritt that they were the captains of this year's team. And can we back it up a little bit more? Because in the spring, John Cook said, look, we want to offer leadership classes to anybody who wants to be a leader, learn about being a leader. And every single player on the roster showed up for every meeting. I wow. think that's an incredible stat. Minor going to Sammy Francis in the middle. Kevin, Kevin Hamley wants to establish that middle attack, get Sammy Francis going. It's a high percentage attack, and usually it's only one on one. What did you notice about Stanford as that match, or that first set, got closer and closer to 25? Well, I thought that they served the Libro for Nebraska too often. They need to go at the other players. Becca Allen going behind her setter. Becca Alec is explosive off the floor. Her fourth kill already hitting 500. Now Lexi Rodriguez. Nice pass from Ruben. She'll get it back and tip over, trying to go to the back corner. Look at Andy Jackson, so fast. But the foot speed of Harper Murray, who was playing middle back to chase down that power dig down the line, was what made the floor defense work. Look at the foot speed. She gets under that, doesn't even have to dive, and then transition attack out of the middle for Nebraska. Short serve from Rodriguez. Kendall Kip out of the back row with the tip. Nebraska ready for it. Lindsey Krause busting up the block. Stanford tipping, Nebraska attacking. Stanford needs to stay aggressive. Two back-to-back -back tips, and it's paid off for Nebraska. We mentioned Nebraska repped that over and over in practice last night and today, that Stanford was going to tip. Got to be ready for it. They have been so far. Tim Miner dumping it. Eric Beeson with the tip. Got it up. Old Levy got underneath it, but it goes out of bounds when it goes back to Nebraska's side. Incredible hustle, but the attack from Cami Miner at the net does by freshman Bergen Riley. Look at the pancake. I don't know how she changed directions to keep that alive for Stanford. 4 0 run for Nebraska. Nebraska's playing loose and aggressive, and right now that's the difference. That was one of the things that John Cook wanted to see. You go on the road to a big top five matchup. How do you handle adversity? So far, so good. Krause, boom! Defense turns into offense for Nebraska, and right now their defense has all the answers. And Stanford calls timeout, a 5-0 run for the Nebraska Cornhuskers on the road. Will be. Courtney Lyle and Holly McPeak with you for this top five matchup. And Nebraska has looked comfortable on the road here at Stanford. They won the first set 25-23, and they're on a 5-0 run. Sammy Francis on the right pin. Merritt Beeson!
The defense. First of all, it was a one-on-one -on -one block by freshman Andy Jackson in the middle. And then look at this easy overhand dig by Lexi Rodriguez, one of the best Libros in the country, just putting on a show. Five kills for Beeson. Rodriguez still serving. Nebraska with seven points off of her serve tonight. Bergen Riley nice up, the freshman setter. And not much Krause could do with that. Transition set went a little bit wide. A, too aggressive on that push. That's a break for Stanford because Nebraska's defense was all over every swing. So now Elia Rubin steps back to serve. I thought Stanford did a really nice job coming out in the first set. They were serving really aggressive. They were, and, and for some reason, I feel like they're doubting themselves a little bit, but they need to put their foot on the gas if they're going to beat a young team who's fearless like this Nebraska squad. Katie Baird with a tough first contact. It hits the scoreboard, and that's going to be dead as it goes back down on Nebraska's side. So a point for the Cornhuskers. Merrick Beeson serving with pace. She's going line to line, and that one gets away from Katie Baird. Got a chance to talk to Merritt yesterday after practice, and I said, you know, where has your game grown the most since you're transferring from Florida to Nebraska? And she said, my secondary setting has gotten so much better, and also serve-receive is something she's worked on. Sammy Francis, tough connection there, still working through it. Cammie Meyer will try Katie Baird. Net violation on Nebraska's block there. But Nebraska, even then, even though there was a net violation, the backcourt is picking it up, making really nice defensive reads. if Bergen Riley had attacked the ball because I saw that she was a front row setter. But it starts from a perfect pass. Harper Murray lays it in her hands and she's got her options. Calls her own number, throwing it down in the middle of the court. A true freshman out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, was a three-time South Dakota Gatorade Player of the Year. Actually played outside hitter for her high school team. But came in as the number one setter in last year's class. And Katie Baird is wide. Stanford wanted a touch. That ball was hit wide. I don't think the defender hit it till after the ball hit the ground. This is a play that Kevin Hambly could challenge, and he picks up that green challenge card. So they'll go going to look to see if there was a touch on this ball. We can also look to see if it was in or out. It looked out watching it live definitely out do you see a touch it's hard to tell her right hand for the defender not at the block but the defender behind I'd like to see it from the end line not on the block watch the defenders right hand it's right behind the referee post Yeah, not a touch there, but what we're looking at is that defender behind. Hard to tell. It is. The call was there was no touch, so it has to be obvious for, that there was a touch for them to overturn this. That's where we need that special camera underneath the referee stand. I think it hits the ground in front of the hard to tell from Lady that. Boy. It in the video has to be definitive to overturn it. Point's going to stay with Nebraska. They confirm the call, no touch on that ball. Largest lead for the Cornhuskers. 
Look at the front row right now for Nebraska. Three incredibly talented freshmen. No question, that was good for Katie Baird. Katie Baird with her fourth kill. Hasn't been easy to get a clean kill like that for Stanford all night long. And then Harper Murray, one of those talented freshmen you mentioned, answers back. And flat and deep to that corner where there's no defender. That is a smart hit. A lot of times freshmen come into these highly ranked programs and don't have those tools yet, and they have to adjust to the collegiate game. But Harper Murray shown she's already got those. That's why she's in the starting lineup for Nebraska. Pacini tips over. Merrick Beeson does the same coming from the back row. Oglavy to Kendall Kip on the left side. Number nine in black for Stanford Oglavy. Beautiful hand set, and that's one of her best skills in transition, especially when Cami Miner's on the ground, digs that ball up, and look at that ball. Perfect for Kendall Kip in transition. Of course, Libero allowed to hand set as long as they're behind the three meter line, and she was. That's an area, a new area you can challenge this year. Stanford, no points off of their four serves in this set. Touch called. Man, seeing what Harper Murray has, the cannon, as you mentioned, in person. Wow. Just wow. Yeah. <laughs> Much better in person. And, and she's not very big, but she's got, like we said, a cannon for an arm. Service long from Bergen Riley. Stanford needs to pick up their service pressure and make some plays defensively. Something that Stanford has really pushed, being even more aggressive than they have in the past. But backing off a little bit here in this match. Elena Oglavy. That went right at Lexi Rodriguez. She did a great job with it. Net violation on Stanford. Stanford's there defensively, but you can't touch the net and negate that dig, especially when you have a chance to score. Kendall Kip. Nice shot down the line. I really like the location of that set by Cami Miner all the way out to Kendall Kip. Kendall Kip can hit the angle, but the fact that Nebraska's given her the line challenging her to take that little sliver, and she's successful on that last swing. Kendall Kip came into Nebraska and in 2019 they won, excuse me, to Stanford in they, 2019, they won a national championship. She's had the time to develop her all-around game, put in the work. Came in as a great player, but has gotten even better. Merritt Beeson. Merritt Beeson one-on-one -on -one against Elia Rubin on that left pin or right pin for Nebraska. Very adept in beating that block. They've been working on her approach angle recently. She had in the summer been focused on just coming straight down the line, and they widened it out a little bit to help her arm swing. She is right-handed, swinging on the right pin. Well, it's hard because that ball has to come all the way across your body there. Elia Rubin for Stanford finds the seam in the Nebraska block. Rubin trying to dig herself out of hitting negative. Her fourth kill. When you have a pass go all the way left, the offense becomes predictable and Stanford's able to score. 
Couple of kills already in this match for Stanford setter Cami Miner. Andy Jackson, the freshman arms that Nebraska has, wow. And how about Bergen Riley, the freshman center, yes. locating the ball so well. That time Sammy Francis late getting to her spot. At Bergen Riley, again, setters don't get enough credit. She came in, she's a true freshman. She has started from day one. There's only been, now she's the second to do that. The other was Nicklin Hames, who's a graduate assistant on the Nebraska staff. Kip wide from the back row. Well, Kendall Kip knows that she has to turn the ball a little bit because Andy Jackson, number 15 in red, solo blocked her the last time. So even though it's just one block in front of her, Kendall Kip knows she has to make a little turn on that ball. Nebraska took the opening set 25-23. They've had a much bigger lead most of set two. Sammy Francis. That, that's a really important play for Stanford. Sammy Francis is in a rotation where she's in the front row with the setter, so she has to be good behind the setter as well, and that's something she's been working to develop. She stayed over the summer, got that extra work in. Ooh. Tough serve, Anna Pringle. Talk about pace and pop on your serve. Anna Pringle comes off the back line, and you see that move just drops so quickly. They go back at Harper Murray again. Pringle's gonna keep attacking her. Back to back, I saw it just last week. Coco Kirsch came off the bench and did the same thing. Two back to back aces. Let's see if Pringle can keep it going for Stanford. And John Cook and Nebraska are gonna take a timeout after a 3-0 run with back-to-back -back aces. That is the tough serving Stanford talks about. And they're serving at the freshman Harper Murray, making her carry a bigger lower and away from the Libro for Nebraska. Nice crowd on hand here at Maples Pavilion. Pretty good Nebraska contingent too. They do travel. Serve down the line and a wide, but a nice run there from Anna Pringle. Laney Choboy, she who was important. You talk about her serve against in their last match against Long Beach State. Served them on an 11 0 run in the second set. Take that. Cammy Miner, deflection off her own block, tries to play it up, goes wide just outside the antenna. So they're wiping up some moisture over on the floor near the scorer's table. We get ready to go. Nebraska up 19-13. It's the first to 25. <laughs> Katie Baird out. Katie Baird trying to go over the top. Misses that one deep. This is a rotation right now where Stanford setters front row. Only two hitters in the front row. And now they're stacking left before this timeout. So Stanford is going to call timeout here. Nebraska up 20 to 13. We knew this was going to be a big test for Nebraska, but right now, wow, they look comfortable. Well, I feel like Nebraska is playing like they have nothing to lose. They're playing loose, uh, and it's showing. I mean, we've seen Stanford make some hitting errors. We saw a lot of tipping early, and Nebraska's just gained the momentum and that confidence. What has happened? Well, we'll take a look at Stanford here for just a second, but going back to Nebraska, they're hitting 722 in this set. We talked about Merritt Beeson, but Harper Murray, she only has one attacking error with six kills. Hitting 417, and then she's got two digs, she's in the serve receive, two blocks. I mean, she is doing it all. We saw her foot speed in the back row. I heard Tyler Hildebrand, the head coach for Long Beach State, talk about this Nebraska team being the best backcourt defense in the country. But I would say overall defense, we're seeing them dominate in the blocking category as well. 
for Stanford, they just got to let it fly. They need yeah. to go way more aggressive. And, I mean, this is a chance to prove themselves against an opponent who they could see at the end of the year. And you do not want them to have that confidence against you. Nebraska undefeated on the season. Stanford 6-1. and one. Their lone loss to Florida. The Florida Gators came in and swept Nebraska. And Florida's been a kind of a surprise team this year. Florida is really impressive, but I felt like Stanford came out really flat. They were not prepared, ready to play in the right mindset. Since then, they've been a lot better. Maybe something they can pull from. Definitely, I think they're trying to set the bar higher, and they have since that loss to Florida. Choboy, and that one's long, service error. I feel like Stanford's trying to generate some energy and fire amongst themselves. They are the more experienced team, returning almost everyone on this roster. Setter is front row for Nebraska. They serve Harper Murray. She comes flying in. And Old Levy takes that one to the face. She's up. I'll tell you, if I was playing against Harper Murray, I would wear a helmet because yeah. this, I mean, Oglevy is one of the premier defenders in the country, and she was not ready for that heat. Stanford's trying to load up Harper Murray by serving her, making her pass and work, and she's still able to answer that. Elena Oglevy looks to be okay. She's staying in the match. Meanwhile, Harper Murray is hitting a season best 462. Kennedy Orr. Kip. The power tip works. It's back to back kills over Ogle Harper. Oglevy and Miner touching some great balls defensively, and then Stanford fails to get that ball over the net. Nebraska needing three more points to say, take set two. And that one sails on Kennedy Orr. But commanding lead right now for Nebraska up 22-14, and they've been able to side out consistently. Another rotation, Becca Alec and Harper Murray in the front row. Freshman setter Bergen Riley as well. Trying to tip to the back corner. Katie Baird cleaned it up. Elia Rubin stopped. Becca Alec. That is four blocks now for her. Becca Alec is doing her job for Nebraska, but hitter coverage is a crucial part of the game, and Stanford needs to do a better job. They need to gobble that ball up and recycle and attack back. Beeson on the back side. Off the block, hits the antenna. Set point, Nebraska. Nebraska, we talked about them preparing for this match. They are ready for that tip. They're sliding behind the block and picking those balls up. Rodriguez. Point Stanford. But it took two tough swings. Lexi Rodriguez, the libero for Nebraska, digging the first ball. Second swing, finally successful. Look at Nebraska go on the road. They are up two sets to none. And Harper Murray Holly with eight kills hitting four six. Tough test for Nebraska. They knew it would be. 
Nebraska head coach John Cook joining us. And Coach Cook, you talked about ramping up the schedule. How do you think your team has fared so far? What stands out about these first two sets against Stanford? Uh, I think we're competing pretty hard. We made some good adjustments, and uh, we're going to have to do that again. I'm sure Stanford's going to make some tweaks here. So, uh, But I like how we're competing. What surprises you the most about how your young team has stepped up so far tonight? Uh, they're taking good swings. You know, we, we were a little nervous starting. He saw the errors and shanks and missed serves, and uh, but they're taking some good swings and making some big moves blocking, and, uh, you know, they're starting to play. You know, again, we're not, we're, we're, uh, <laughs> we don't tell them that they're young. <laughs> thanks, Coach. We appreciate All it. All right, thanks. Bye. Yeah, never going to be an excuse, right? The new faces, the youth, that's not something Nebraska is going to talk about internally. Never. Drama in Maples. Stanford down two sets to Nebraska. This is a must-win set for the Cardinal. Harper Murray into the TV table. Free ball back over to Stanford. Sammy Miner. The timing wasn't there, but guess what? They're going to get a kill. And Laney Choboy. Three Nebraska bodies were on the floor. Everybody diving after that volleyball. Rodriguez, Riley. Oh my goodness. They understood the assignment. Don't let the ball hit the floor. Looks like she's okay. And Lenny Choboy is going to stay in there. Freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina. She was an outside hitter for her high school team, but the number one Libero in this year's signing class. She was an outside hitter? Yep. She's five foot three. She is. Wow. She's got the hops, Holly. She's got the hops, and she's got a loud voice, according to <laughs> Coach John Cook. <laughs> Alec Tips. Ogilvy there. Kendall Kip, no, rejected, stopped all of the things. Harper Murray, number 27, on the left side is way up and over and all over where Kendall Kip wants to attack that ball. We have seen on display the all-around game that Harper Murray has come in with in her freshman season at Nebraska, playing six rotations, blocking, attacking, serving. That time, Sammy Francis goes deep and flat to the corner for the Stanford kill. This is an important set right now for the Stanford team. A down to 2-0, they have to win this set. Sent back. Power tip down. And credit Lexi Rodriguez for covering her hitters. I mean, that Becca Alec turned around and thanked her Libro for doing that. And such an important skill. And I think sometimes people relax in that area. And you can't at this level. I thought you had an awesome question to John Cook today at Sir Pass. You said, you know, what makes Lexi Rodriguez so special, so good? Yeah, I mean, looking at her, you can't tell. But she's so balanced and disciplined and confident. And he, he, he talked about her being ground-based and has a great platform. But the way she reads the game in her volleyball IQ, it stands out. And just a worker, too. I mean, wants to be the best. Good up by Pringle. Giddy Baird had to reach for it. Merritt Beeson blocked. 
McKenna Bacini. That's only the third block of this match for Stanford, but McKenna Vicini gets out to Katie Baird and closes that scene. Look at that handwork over the net. So important to be quick and over. Krause. Her third kill. Krause getting it through that angle, through that seam of the Stanford blockers. They need to close it up. And you see Lainey Choboy, she's being looked at by the training staff over on the Nebraska sideline right now. Shaken up in that scramble. Everybody was diving on the floor to get the volleyball up. She's tough as nails. Cami Miner back to Katie Baird. That's tough. I mean, how big of a difference has Katie Baird made coming back? Her first match of the season was at Texas. She's been hitting over 400 for a variety of matches since that Florida loss. She was not in that match, but she's made a big difference in serve, receive, and taking really smart swings. And she missed the first three games before returning for Texas, where Stanford went on the road to Texas in front of a packed Gregory Gym and swept the defending national champions. Service error, Merritt Beeson. Stanford with a two-point lead. Both teams have three service aces, but I feel like if you're talking about the serve and pass game, Nebraska has the advantage. They've been passing the ball better, and Stanford hasn't been getting Nebraska out of system like they have been most of their opponents this year. 11th service error for Stanford. And good to see Helene Choboy back in the game. Kip on the right side. Bergen Riley to Andy Jackson and connection not there. I like that Nebraska trying to run that ball in the middle in transition. Just a misconnection. Really the first one we've seen all night. Yeah. Bergen Riley has looked really comfortable with all the weapons that she has. And when we asked Coach John Cook about her, he said, you know what, she's just consistent. You know what you're going to get. And we're seeing that in her location. That hit off the Stanford block and on the scoreboard, which is a bit low here inside Maples. So that ball's out of bounds. Yes, point for Nebraska. It can hit and come down on your side. And then but it's it playable. Yes, but it can't hit and go over. Just to the back row for Sammy Francis. Stanford needs Sammy Francis to score more. That's a high percentage kill. Takes some pressure off the pin hitters, and you see her go in that gap for that offensive kill. Her first season, well, back in 2021, remember the all Pac-12 freshman team playing outside hitter. In her second season now at the middle blocker position, and Kevin Hambly told us, you know, for her future, if she wants to go play overseas, it's probably the best position for her. Okay, Becca Alec. Lay out. Doesn't matter though, Stanford's gonna crush that ball. Elia Rubin. I love to see that kind of effort in eye work. Becca Alex paying attention. She's not on her heels, slides under that ball and lifts it. Even though Stanford wins this point, you have to credit her for that effort to stay in that rally. We've seen some great defensive hustle on both sides of the net. We certainly have, and, and these are two of the premier programs that put a lot of emphasis on their defense. Right now, Stanford has a stack on the left side of the court. Cami Miner, the setter, is in the front row, so she can attack the ball. And we have seen her do that a few times tonight.
Tip in the back row, had to tip. Becca Alex sent it back. Elliot Rubin take two. No! Triple block. Harper Murray came over to help. I don't even know if Becca Alec needs any help. Number five in the middle for Nebraska has been enormous, but Harper Murray takes that sharp angle away on that last swing. Look at Harper Murray's stat line right now. Eight kills. She's hitting 467. Two aces, four dicks, four blocks. Her season high is five blocks. Ruben is wide. Nebraska is challenging Ruben to hit that line, and she's not as comfortable in that particular set. Eight attacking errors tonight for Elia Ruben. She's hitting in the negative. Last match they played against Minnesota, she led them in kills. Yes, yeah, 17 of them. Decent. What's good? Guess what? Nebraska's ready for the tip. Every yes. time Stanford tips, few have dropped, but very few. I cannot tell you how many times Jalen uh, Reyes yesterday in practice said, they're going to tip. They're going to tip. The assistant coach for Nebraska. We heard it again today. Yes. We hear them yelling from the bench, and they understand the assignment. First lead for Nebraska in this set. They are on a 4-0 run right now. We've seen a couple of times. Stanford pushes Nebraska. They push right back. Service error. Point for the Cardinal. feel like the service errors are adding up for Stanford because there's too many errors and not enough aces. Yeah, 13 service errors now, just three aces for Stanford. This is an important uh, rotation for Stanford to get out of. They've got a front row setter, Cammie Miner, two hitters in the front row, and they've been getting stuck in this rotation. Almost got the kick back over, but that's going to be a point off the swing from Katie Baird. And Stanford able to get out of that rotation on their first attempt. McKenna Vicini back in for the Cardinal along with Anna Pringle. serving, in my mind, the best passer on the Nebraska team, Lexi Rodriguez, and, and you can't do that. I mean, you, you have to attack seams, you got to go short, serve into traffic. You cannot serve right out of it. There was a point last night in practice that John Cook stopped and he said, look, no, 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 we're not going to do that. Something had just happened on the back row. He said, we don't take balls away from Lexi. There is a reason. <laughs> There's a reason she wears that black jersey and she's got command of the backcourt. Time All American. It's not easy to be the national freshman of the year as a Libro. And she was. And now it's All American as well. Came in as the number 10 overall player in her class a couple of years ago and right away was ready to don that Libro jersey. Good angle from Kendall Kipp. That's kill number eight. Stanford comes up with the dig on the tip play. Oglavy picks it up, and then Kendall Kipp goes sharp cross court inside the block for the Stanford point. Kendall Kipp was slow to get going in that first set. Stanford actually had a double block up on Andy Jackson, the freshman number 15 in red, and she's still able to score. High contact point, see double block right there. Pretty impressive. Go, go, go. 
Katie Bear to the right side. Nebraska's block waiting. Take two. Not that time. Good decision by Cammie Miner to go back again on that second ball because the middle blocker was late getting there to close. There she closes, has to pop back to the middle and then back again and just a little bit late on her press. Taylor Bevan up to serve, Stanford up by a point, a must win set for the Cardinal as Nebraska has taken the first two sets. Bergen Riley just back over. Bergen Riley, when you're a front row setter, you know to turn and block and joust and touch in second. But I feel like Stanford can touch and turn and control that ball better. Kip. Chill boy underneath it. Harper Murray. No touch. And Stanford the first to 15. Alto, Stanford up 15-14. Nebraska has come in and won the first two sets. Harper Murray a big reason for that. She's been spectacular on both sides of the ball. You see her four blocks, two aces, She's in serve receive. I mean, that's a big responsibility for a freshman, but she's got the swagger, come up with some big plays. Look at Bergen Riley, the freshman. But it starts with the perfect pass. Stanford has not been able to get Nebraska out of system. And we've seen Nebraska make the adjustment when they do have a bad pass, because they started out a little bit shaky on the passing front, but man, they flipped the switch. They did, and I don't think Stanford's serving the ball tough enough. Minor to Kip. Kennedy Orr with the up, back over to Stanford. Becca Alec! You need an explosive play, she's got it. That's an unfortunate ball control error. I mean, this comes over easy. That's a free ball. Sammy Francis puts too much on it. Becca Alec makes him pay. Six kills for Alec, one attacking error. That puts her at 500. Kip is blocked. They'll try the other side. Elia Rubin had to reach for it. Good up by Beeson. Free ball back to the Cardinal. Sammy Francis just turning on it. There's some really nice defensive touches on the Nebraska side of the net. Love the high percentage middle attack. Cammy Miner getting Sammy Francis involved in the Stanford offense. They need that. Much closer set here in the third. Remember, Nebraska won set two, 25 to 16. So far in set three, we've had 10 ties. Nebraska on the match hitting 409 compared to Stanford's 227. Tip by Elia Rubin, Laney Choboy swoops in and Sammy Francis in the net. Choboy comes from right back, picks up that super short tip and Nebraska able to turn it into a point. Kimmy Meyer on the dunk. Tied at 17. Good pass there for Stanford and when they pass the ball well, Kimmy Miner does a nice job calling her own number. She's been very successful. And three kills now for Stanford setter Cami Miner. Kip saves it. Out to Katie Bear off the solo block, just takes Harper Murray. And Cami Miner isolates Baird out on the left pin. They have had very few one on ones all night long.
Good to see Stanford taking advantage of that. Barrett Beeson inside the court. Barrett, not one on one, but doesn't matter. Timeout, Nebraska. Stanford starting to feel it defensively. Good transition offense on that last swing. Sammy Miner pushes it out again to Baird. And we talked about Stanford having that veteran presence. And Cami Miner, I mean, she knows these attackers so well and how to put them in good position. Stanford looks a lot better here in set number three. What have you noticed about the Cardinal? Well, they're fighting to, to stay alive. Yes. Live to play another set and actually have a chance against this young, talented Nebraska team. Katie Baird has stepped up for them here in set number three. Five kills on seven swings, no errors. She's hitting 714 in this set alone. And Sammy Francis has been hot lately, seven for 14. A race to 25 points. Peace and blocks! The fifth block of the match for Stanford. But it starts with a tough serve. The pass is off the net coming, the set's coming from way off the net. And Stanford's blocks able to score. That's a 4-0 run for the Cardinal. Service error number 14. But did you see Harper yes. Murray pursue that ball off the block? Watch number 27, middle back in red. This ball goes right way off the block, and she's so quick with her feet, touches it, but can't come up with it. Stanford having to work very hard on the offensive side. Just four points away from forcing a fourth set. Lindsay Krause, and a Pringle underneath it. Murray gets that one. Krause attacking error. A five to one run for Stanford. Stanford what, is doing what they normally do. Good defense and able to take smart swings. Even though Nebraska's touching a lot of balls defensively, they haven't been able to transition them back. Nebraska calls its final timeout in this set as Stanford Pulling ahead 22 to 18. Stanford looks energized. They've been making plays and small adjustments where they're attacking the ball, and it's paid off. Well, the veteran presence, Katie Baird, has been helpful. Kendall Kip, all. Wow, I mean, they're responding being down 0 2 to a. Very talented and hungry Nebraska team. And the competitiveness coming through for Stanford, the experience. Merritt Beeson's got some experience too. If you're Stanford, you need to stay disciplined on that last play. Nebraska was in trouble. Merritt Beeson was off balance and still able to get Nebraska a side out. So back steps Lexi Rodriguez. One of Nebraska's captains. Andy Jackson in the middle. Cammie Miner out to Kendall Kim. Stanford starting to look like the team I saw last week play some dominating matches. 
Watch them turn this defense into a big transition kill by Kip on the right side, and you can see the energy really elevating on the Stanford side. Momentum has shifted here, and it needed to, because if Stanford doesn't win this set, the match is over. Baird. Good up from Ogilvy. And Katie Baird just tipped to the middle of the court in a set point Stanford. When teams play on the perimeter, that middle part of the court is open. A lot of teams try and attack it, but Nebraska's not let a lot of those drop. 11 kills for Katie Baird. Set point Stanford, Cami Miner on the serve. Krause. Fourth set, here we come. Stanford ending set three on an eight to two run. Force a fifth set. Nebraska, if they can come back here, they could get a big win on the road in their first major test of the season. The only ranked opponent Nebraska's played so far this year has been Creighton. They're ramping up their young players to get to this match, and they have shown up. Any adjustment you want to see from Nebraska after set three? I, and Nebraska's doing a lot of good things. I just thought Stanford responded. Uh, they could probably be a little bit more effective offensively. There were some unforced hitting errors at the end that cost them. Overpass. Becca Alex. She lives for that, I feel like. She's always ready. One of the things I love about Becca Alex's game is she owns the net. Yeah. I mean, she goes laterally from side to side. She is a beast defensively and then offensively has a huge window as well. Yeah, she, John Cook told us she just competes constantly, and he saw that in recruiting. She played outside hitter, she played middle, and she also played basketball. We saw her slide under that ball that dribbled over the net. Just the quick reactions, the athleticism. It's a reason she got herself into the starting lineup as a true freshman last year and has stayed there. Here's Elia Rubin. Service error. That is 15 service errors now for Stanford. Nebraska has 14. It's 15, but they only have three aces. Right. And they have not got Nebraska out of system. I mean, that's the key. If, you're, if you don't have a high ace number, it's okay if Nebraska is out of system, but they're not. Cammy Miner going over. That time, Becca Alec was there, gets a piece of it, but can't control it. Kevin Hambly was talking to us about Cami Miner and how she stayed over the summer and really used the spring and the summer to clean up some mechanical stuff. I mean, obviously, she's been a great setter already in her Stanford career, but just tweaking the little things. When you talk about that, Stanford has had one spring for the last three or four years where they've been able to focus on that technical stuff because of COVID, because of some of the restrictions. And it was a, a spring that they really took advantage of. And he said, Kevin Hambly told us, we saw he saw so much growth in all of his players after this past spring. Pacini off of one foot, stopped by Nebraska's defense. That ball set a little bit low, and Vicini could not get on top of that for Stanford. Stanford's in a rotation. Cammie Miner's in the front row. She can attack the ball. Kip available out of the back row. Serving short, Katie Baird. Hustles to clean it up, but Nebraska's going to get a free ball. Bergen Riley going to her right pin. Katie Baird saved by Rodriguez. Minor to Kip. Busting the block. Kendall Kip. I am loving the transition offense right now for Stanford. They are moving the ball around. You see left pin. 
This is just a down ball. Cami Miner can put it anywhere and loads them up on the right side with Kendall Kipp on the back row. An ace for Cami Miner, the fourth ace for Stanford. Cami Miner going line to line, and there's some traffic on the left side of the court down the line from Cami Miner. And she's attacking that. Bergen Riley, the setter for Nebraska, is running in for, from that area. Three hitters in that area as well. She'll go back over there again with her serve. Andy Jackson behind. Andy Jackson ran and put herself in a position to score. McKenna Vicini was a little bit surprised, but Andy Jackson is so quick. Watch her work and drive as an offensive attacker to make herself available to her setter. Coming off a match against Long Beach State where she had eight kills, no errors, hit 667. Krause. Kip. Tooling the block. That transition set came out a lot flatter than Stanford expected, but Kip a little off-speed shot works off the block. Kevin Hamley talking to his blockers, telling them what he wants them to do defensively. Nebraska setters in the front row. She can attack this ball. Andy Jackson denied that time. Elia Rubin. Elia Rubin, number 13 in wide, and McKenna Vicini. They know where it's going. Look at them work in unison to put up a solid block for the Stanford point. Other side, they'll try Krause. Krause with the second swing gets it done. And it's the little things, the hitter coverage. There's bodies on the floor every time Nebraska gets blocked to keep the ball alive, and that gets them more opportunities. Cammy Miner on the run. Elia Rubin taking the bump set, and it is long. Stanford out of system, and they only have one option, so the offense becomes predictable, and that's a lot of pressure on Elia Rubin to put that ball. Stanford's in system. Right. They had all the other hitters available, which stresses the blockers for Nebraska and creates a one on one opportunity on the left pin. Elia Rubin scores down the line. Harper Murray, that gets her to double figures. 10 kills for the freshman. We've seen Harper Murray attack that corner. I felt like Oglavy for Stanford. It's kind of shifted to the corner, opening up that sharp angle for her. Jingle kip off hands. Bergen Riley using the back row attack from Merritt Beeson. Bergen Riley is doing her job. Yeah, she's putting sets in really nice locations, and obviously she's got talented arms around her, but she is quietly getting it done. Getting to see her in person for the first time last night at practice, I mean, beautiful hands. Her set, her touch on the ball, fantastic. And you can see the confidence. She's quiet, but super confident, and you know, I, I love a setter who just puts her hitters in good positions. 
she batters the ball when they're out of system, when she's on the run, she puts up a hittable ball. The communication, too, you can tell watching practice. I mean, it's constant feedback from Coach John Cook, also Nicklin Hames, who is on the staff, who was a longtime setter here, got him to a national championship. They're all working with this freshman setter for Nebraska. Yeah, we saw that earlier today. There was feedback every set, just helping Bergen Riley get more and more consistent and confidence. That's a ball that should not drop against Stanford. This ball's a little bit missed time, tipped to the middle of the court, and there's hesitation to get under that ball and keep it alive. You cannot let that ball drop. So Nebraska up to a win for Nebraska in this set, and they win the match. Stanford's got to win this set in order to force a fifth set. So the floor is wiped up or ready to go. Oblivy getting underneath it, Elia Rubin. Bergen Riley to Harper Murray. Rubin. Harper Murray was there. Merrick Beeson. Nebraska saying it was out. It was rolled Stanford point. The referees say net violation, but did you see Harper Murray come all the way across the court to pick up that tip? But then she's not available in transition as an attacker, and the offense becomes predictable on the right side. Stanford able to score on the block. Close fourth set. Nebraska won the first two sets tonight. The second set they dominated 25 to 16. Stanford took set three. Pisa with a little authority, a little oomph behind it. Good turn down the line, but the pass from Nebraska in system and then too many weapons, that really stresses Stanford's defense. Sammy Francis, and that one goes long on the slide play. Largest lead for Nebraska here. Yeah, Sammy Francis going for that deep cross court ball. I like the idea, just missing that. Execution needs to be there. You cannot let Nebraska get too far ahead. How do you think Nebraska's service pressure has been? I feel like they've got more out of system plays from Stanford than vice versa. And, and that's where they're winning the serve and pass game. Tough serve from Anna Pringle. Gets a free ball back to the Cardinal. Katie Baird! All set up by a tough serve. They got Nebraska out of system. They have not been out of system much, but free ball. And then you see the quick feed to Katie Baird on the left side. That puts Katie Baird at 12 kills now to lead Stanford hitting 417. First point for Stanford in this set off of its own serve. Krause, ooh, that's tough. Little tweak in the pass, and Nebraska still able to get out of their serve receive. Good sharp angle. Stanford in a rotation where setter Cami Miner is front row. She can attack the ball. Going to 25. Kip sailing in. Krause digs it off the scorer's table. And Bear just straight to the court, straight down. Credit Cami Miner, one on one on the left pin. That's a good ratio. You want that one on one matchup if you're the setter. And this is a transition ball. Cami Miner jump sets and holds that middle blocker in the middle. 
That's important too now. Cami Minder rotates to the back row, so she's got three weapons in the front row. Decent. Somehow got it done. Well, a little misdirect. It went off Ficini's hand, and Kip was not ready for it to change directions. Aaron Beeson starting out at Florida, spent two seasons there. Arrived at Florida as an outside hitter and moved to the right pen. This will be her third season playing that opposite position. Sharp, but wide, just wide. And Nebraska is the first to 15. And Nebraska win in this set. And they beat Stanford. Set Nebraska hitting 444 compared to Stanford's 176. Merritt Beeson serving for the Cornhuskers. Cammie Miner, she's got all three weapons in the front row. Kip is on the left pin in this rotation. Rodriguez underneath it. And Krause is stopped. Vicini. Kip rolls it in the middle of the court. Look at Rodriguez scoop under that and lift that for her setter. But the Stanford team knows that ball's going to the left pin. Well-formed block for the Stanford point. Stanford with seven blocks. Nebraska with 9.5. We knew their block was going to be a big factor. That's one of their strengths. Roll shot from Krause. Off speed. Caught him. That ball in the middle of the court is dropping against Stanford. They need to be more disciplined picking that ball up. Oglevy handled that beautifully. Out of the back row, Merritt Beeson. Triple block by Stanford. They said they were going to do that, but that's one of the first times we've seen it pay off of Merritt Beeson attacking out of the back row. You see Kip sneak in from the side, but McKenna Vicini got that one for Stanford. Stanford down by two, Oglevy serving. Harper Murray, there it is. It went a little quiet, but the cannon is back. Well, guess where the serve went from Stanford. You can't serve the libero for Nebraska. She passes nails. She's one of the best in the country. And when they do, Nebraska's in system. 11 kills now for Harper Murray, hitting 409. by Ruben. Two bodies down, but Elia Ruben finally able to get a short tip to drop. Defensively, Nebraska's been playing Elia Ruben tough. And, and a lot of times, Elia Ruben's been out of system because the pass is off the net, which makes her job really tough. Yeah, she's had to work really hard tonight, has been hitting negative most of the night. Still seven kills, four blocks for Elia Ruben. Oglevy digs it. Kip. On the cover play, Nebraska players were yelling that Elia Rubin touched the net. But look at the transition swing they get out. And Becca Alec, like I said, she owns the net. She is just patrolling. Definitely someone you want on your team. Nebraska with 10 and a half blocks. Their season high is 12. Out of system, a free ball back to Nebraska. Alec in the middle. Showboy laying out. Rodriguez laying out on the free ball back to Stanford. It's coming over. Harper Murray on cleanup, but the DSs for Nebraska everywhere.
that effort by, by Choi Boy. Cho Boy, look at that, lays it out. Her entire team is running with her. They are not going to let that ball drop without a huge effort, and it pays off for them. Stanford calls timeout, the exclamation point on that rally from Harper Murray. But then Stanford had a free ball and did not execute on the pass. It went right back over to Nebraska. I know you were so excited, as was I, to see the Liberos and the DS as the defensive specialists in this game. It hasn't disappointed. No, these are the two best Liberos in the country, Lexi Rodriguez and, and Elena Oglevy. She, I mean, she's been so good all season long. I feel like she's very calm. You don't see a lot of emotion. Both of them are very even keeled, but do a really nice job. Lexi Rodriguez in serve receive has been exceptional tonight. Yeah, Lexi Rodriguez responded. They looked really solid in set number three. But can Nebraska finish off the Cardinal? They haven't beaten Stanford since 2008. Kip. Keeping him going. Kendall Kip out of the back row. Stanford takes care of the pass there. I believe that was a backcourt violation. Kendall Kip over the line. It's a 3 0 run for Stanford. Excuse me, for Nebraska. Wow, the hustle. They got it back over. Francis tonight. Nelia Rubin was trying to swipe it off the block. It was really tight. Point for Nebraska. John Cook up out of his seat. He loves the defensive effort and hustle. Starts with Rodriguez and then look at the foot speed by Merritt Beeson to keep that ball alive. And then Elia Rubin feels like she's trapped, tries to go off the hand out of bounds. Nebraska saying no touch. A 4-0 run now for Nebraska. Stanford calls timeout. King errors. Bergen Riley behind the line. And there's the pass they needed. Cami Miners front row, aggressive throwdown by the setter for Stanford. the spark Stanford needed. Elia Rubin is going to step back to serve. 21-16. Merritt Beeson is going to kill that ball. That ball hit the block for Stanford out of bounds. It was set by Harper Murray all the way across the court. It was, and you heard the crowd groan because it didn't come out clean. But that's not what's being challenged. Yeah, so Kevin Hambly using a challenge here, and they're going to look to see the touch on the ball. The original call was that Stanford touched this, but did it only go off the tape? Did it touch that Stanford block? Ooh. Hard to tell, looks like tape, but it could have got the side of Miner's arm. So the call is confirmed. They did see a touch on that ball. But again, a chance for Stanford to regroup here. They didn't have any timeouts, too. So you take a look at that play. Smart challenge. Yeah. As Nebraska three points away now from winning the match. A five to one run, and Harper Murray continues the serve. That is the third time 
she's dribbled it over the net. She has three aces, and every single one of them has been a dribbler that drops, too. Sometimes they drop and they're playable, but that one's dropping pretty darn short. Oglevy's there trying to get there. It makes me think that she can do it on purpose. She might <laughs> be able to do that. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised by anything she could do. Right, yeah, she has been very impressive. You can see why she was the number one overall recruit. Nebraska knew this would be their biggest test of the season. It starts a very tough stretch that leads right into Big Ten play. But now two points away from beating the number five team in the nation. Katie Bear did exactly what she should, popped it. Well, it was interesting because the Nebraska blockers pulled their hands down because they did not want to get tooled, and that left the middle open for Bears. Seeing that the tip was coming, hanging in the air, and swatting it down for the Nebraska point. It's been a while since Nebraska has beaten Stanford. Is this it? Match point with Lexi Rodriguez serving. Kitty Baird off the block. Miner back to Baird. Second match point. And Baird has the answer down the line. But Stanford has to play some defense right now, and it starts from the service line. Kendall Kip. Watch out for the Cardinal. That's one. Can they chip away? Third match point, and John Cook is going to call timeout. For Stanford. Beeson. Long. Stanford keeping the serve on Harper Murray, who nailed that pass. Nebraska was in system, just a misconnect by Beeson. Couldn't get her hand on top of it. Fourth match point, Nebraska. A 3-0 run for Stanford. Andy Jackson in for the first time. Since 2008, Nebraska beats Stanford. The last serve of the match goes to the best passer on the court, Lexi Rodriguez. That can't happen if you're Stanford. You cannot do that. Stanford had won five in a row against Nebraska. The Cornhuskers had never beaten Stanford on its home floor until tonight. How did they do it? Defense. Fearless defense, the effort on every single play. And I'll tell you, those young players were just not